shout hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. Our God is omnipotent, not impotent. Say amen. amen. Praise God. I can feel the presence of God in this place. And I pray that each and every one may be gloriously affected. We are already affected, but it will continue. You may be seated. I want to come straight to the point. You know, I'm an evangelist. Uh, I don't apologize for that. I keep saying that. Because uh, sometimes it's necessary. I was in a certain country and uh, I was invited to a banquet and I sat at a table and there was the German ambassador. And uh, we talked and I found that man was a true born again Christian. That is not so often in Germany, but I was blessed. And then the ambassador said to me, Reverend Bonke, you cannot preach in Germany as you would preach in Africa. In Africa, you preach like this. He said, in Germany, you must come a little bit from the right and a little bit from the left. I said to him, sir, you are the diplomat. I'm the evangelist. Oh, I've never met an evangelistic diplomat. We give it right on the nose. He who has the Son has life. He who has not the Son has not life. The gospel is not an alternative among others. It is an ultimatum. It is an ultimatum. Repent and believe the gospel. Mark 16 verse 15, the Great Commission. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. When I read this, I somehow feel as if Jesus is pushing his disciples. As if he says, go! Go, go, go! Preach, preach, preach! Why don't you go? Why don't you preach? There is, when you read that in the context, you find there is a real urgency. I feel something like an emergency. Jesus wants us to go and preach the gospel. I've heard Christians say, allow me to, to be so candid. They say, if we pray, the nation will get saved. All we need to do is prayer. I'm telling you, if all Christians in Australia would pray 365 days per year and 24 hours per day, I mean, Australia would still go to hell until somebody in the prayer meeting wakes up, goes outside to tell somebody on the street that Jesus saves. An unpreached gospel is no gospel at all. Gospel is news. News is only news when it is communicated. An unpreached gospel is like a bottle of medicine with a cork on top. Unless you remove the cork, the patient will die even if the medicine is next to his bed. We've got to proclaim the gospel. We must preach it. Go and preach. People who only pray walk on only one leg, the left one. People who only preach walk on only one leg, the right one. No, for goodness sake, God has given us two legs. Preach, pray, preach, pray, preach, pray, preach, pray. Amen. Australia will be saved. Glory to God. You know, I found, I found a work, the working principle between the Holy Word of God and the Holy Spirit in Scripture. I was amazed that it had eluded me for so long. 
but suddenly I saw it. The Lord just lit up the scripture. Let me quickly turn to it. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. In the beginning, God. The Spirit was hovering over that chaotic mass. Boiling matter. Thick darkness. It must have been absolutely frightening. Hovering, hovering. How long was the Holy Spirit hovering? A billion years? A million years? I don't know. But I know one thing. Nothing happened. Absolutely nothing happened. Until verse 3. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And then I saw it. The Holy Spirit was waiting for the Word. He cannot operate without the spoken Word. That is the principle. And I feel the Holy Spirit is hovering over whole nations, ready to change and save whole nations. But somebody has got to go and speak the Word of God. And I'm telling you, when I say the Word of God, I mean the Word of God because the Holy Spirit is not obliged to confirm political speeches. If you want the original results, we've got to preach the original message. Preach what the apostles preached and you will get what the apostles got. We've got to preach Christ crucified and risen from the dead. Jesus saves. Hallelujah. The moment God spoke, let there be light, the Holy Spirit rode in on that word, and there was light. Oh, hallelujah. I'll tell you, I am absolutely sure something is going to happen here this weekend. The fire of God is going to fall, and you will go, and you will preach yourself hoarse, but you will see how God is going to change this world. Jesus saves. Hallelujah. We must preach the gospel. I grew up in North Germany as a small boy in post-war Germany. Right there, very close to the North Sea. Tidal area. When the tide was out, we boys played there in the mud to the horror of our parents. And in the mud, at low tide, were barges sitting in that mud. Barges, ships, built for that keyless, for that uh, tidal traffic, keyless boats. They were packed with building materials, sand, bricks and the like. They were so heavy, a thousand tons, maybe two thousand tons, I don't know. But I, as a boy, thought no power on earth can move these barges. Then the tide returned. All of a sudden, it began to gargle around those barges. Things began to change. Half an hour later, the barges were floating. Another half an hour later, I, as a 12-year-old boy, stood at the pier and moved a barge with one leg. That has become a parable to me. When we preach the word of God, the tide comes in. Yeah. 
all of a sudden conditions change all of a sudden what could never be moved is movable the incurable is curable and the impossible is possible I believe with all of my heart that we have a fantastic chance as the first generation in this world to see a whole generation getting saved it is possible in Jesus name it is possible praise God we need to go out and preach the gospel it is a tragedy I feel when Christians only preach the gospel within the sacred walls of a church that's the most evangelized piece of real estate in the world because the sinners are not there maybe a handful if you want to catch fish don't throw the net into the bathtub <laughs> there ain't no fish if you want to catch fish you need to take your net and throw it into the river throw it into the sea that's where the fish is we need to go out Jesus said go and preach the gospel go and preach the gospel this somehow has totally consumed me that's all I'm thinking about but I feel and I see how the Holy Spirit confirms this absolutely gloriously say amen, amen. let me go a step further Jesus knew if the disciples would have gone the way they were they would have been pretty useless they could not have fulfilled the Great Commission at all so he said to them wait in Jerusalem until you have received the power from on high that is not a small matter that was the basis to be able to carry out the Great Commission and they went and they received when the day of Pentecost had fully come your day of Pentecost is fully coming say amen, amen. the first time we re we hear or read the expression baptism into the Holy Spirit is Matthew 3 11 when John the Baptist spoke and he said I baptize in water when he said that he stood in the river of Jordan that's why some people still think Christianity is wet and cold I baptize you into water he said, he who comes after me is greater than I. He talked about Jesus. John the Baptist introduced another Baptist. Jesus the Baptist. But Jesus was not standing in a river of water. John said, he would baptize into the Holy Spirit and fire fire so John here stood in the river Jordan baptizing the people into cold water but on this side let me say Jesus the other Baptist is standing in a river of liquid fire and he is putting his arm around men and women and he is baptizing them into that river that is what happened on the day of Pentecost oh hallelujah now let me let me remind you of a Sunday school lesson you had long ago 
The word baptism today is a religious word. But 2,000 years ago, it was a common word. It was a commercial word. It was used, for instance, in the trade of dyeing fabrics. When the dyer took the cloth and lowered it into the dye, that process of lowering that cloth into the dye was the word baptizo, baptizing, baptism. The cloth in the dye. And when the cloth was in the dye, then the dye came into the cloth. And when the dyer pulled the cloth out, it became evident that the cloth had accepted the nature of the dye. It looked like the dye, it smelled like the dye, it was just like the dye. Now let me leave the dyer alone and let me come to Jesus in that river of liquid fire. He shall baptize you into the Holy Spirit and fire. I tell you how that is happening. He is going to dip you into that fire. You in the fire and the fire in you. I heard, I heard a preacher say, he said, thank God, when the Lord baptized me in the Holy Spirit, he anointed my lips. Another one said, thank God, he anointed my right hand, so I lay my right hand on the sick when I pray. <laughs> Do you really think Jesus, when you stand in the river of fire, is just dipping one toe in, or one hand, or one ear, or something like that? I say to you, you will get a thorough soaking. Your entire personality will be soaked, soaked with that fire of the Holy Spirit. And when you come out, you look like fire. You feel like fire. You smell like fire. Oh, hallelujah! Here we come in the mighty name of Jesus. He maketh his angels winds and his ministers flames of fire. Isn't that fantastic? I don't know if you have noticed it already or not, but I'm a hot preacher. Amen! If you haven't noticed it, your thermometer must be broken. <laughs> well, I can feel the fire. And I know I am a flame of fire. I'm not afraid of the devil. The devil is afraid of me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. We are not the hunted, we are the hunters. In my name, they shall cast out devils. Glory to God. Tonight, Jesus is here to put his arm around you. And he is here to baptize you into that river of liquid fire and you will never ever be the same again i guarantee say amen, amen. glory to god glory to god blessed be the name of jesus well you know I met someone in Germany, a minister of the gospel, 
He came there. When I looked at him and he was coming, I could see there was something wrong. He was sick. He said to me, I've come to your meeting in the hope what God would help me. He said, I'm crushing under the burden of my church. I'm a pastor. I crush under the burden of my church. Then I thought, you must have a mighty big church. I said, how many people do you have on a Sunday? He said, 50. I said, brother, are you baptized into the Holy Spirit and fire? Oh no, he said, my denomination does not believe in it. But he said, I suffer a total burnout. I suffer a total burnout. I suffer a total burnout. And I only had 30 seconds to figure out one thing. How can somebody suffer a total burnout who has lived his whole life in a fridge? In a fridge you may suffer a freeze out, but you can't suffer a burn out. I say to everyone, open the door of the fridge. Jesus is waiting in a river of liquid fire and you shall be soaked, soaked and leave this great stadium as a flame of fire in Jesus name. Say Amen. amen. Hallelujah. I was one day preaching to a group of people. They sat there. Suddenly the Holy Spirit fell. Wow. They lost, they forgot all their church manners. And they were filled with joy and they took off like crazy. And in that group, in the middle of that group, there were three people. They seemed to be totally unaffected. Looking around like this. And I watched them. And I watched them. And I watched them. The whole place was burning. And they... That day, I learned a lesson. Those three people, I call these type of people, I call them asbestos Christians. Because they are fireproof. I want you to say, I am flammable for God. Shout it. Louder! Yes! Hallelujah! I am flammable for God! And I am not ashamed to be flammable for Jesus! I am not ashamed at all! Let the world make their jokes. But I tell you, I see millions of souls come to Jesus Christ. And I thank God for it. I thank God for it from the bottom of my heart. We serve a mighty, mighty, mighty God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, you in the fire and the fire in you. We are accepting the, the divine nature. The divine nature. If our God is a consuming fire, I'm telling you, a glacier can never represent him. It's against the character of our God. Oh, that's why those disciples had to wait for the fire from above. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, Jesus is here. And you are here. And that's all that matters. Really. 
I sometimes have been in churches. I had the impression I was sitting in a flight simulator. You know, you know a flight simulator? The student pilot sits in that flight simulator thinking he is flying at 40,000 feet. It looks so real, it feels so real. But in fact, he is stuck to the floor. And many Christians, they think they are in heaven number seven. But in fact, they are still sitting right there, screwed to the floor. We've got to get rid of virtual Christianity. We've got to go out and got to go to the highways and byways and preach the gospel to those who don't know Jesus. Hallelujah. I challenge everyone here in the name of Jesus. Don't be a virtual Christian. The world and its evils are real. A virtual answer is no answer at all. Calvary was not virtual. It was real. His blood that he shed was real. The nails that pierced him were real. We live in a real world and Jesus provides real salvation if we preach the real gospel. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I praise Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. I believe in my heart that the fire is going to fall here tonight because Jesus is here. Do you know that Jesus is here? I don't like books written or proving, trying to prove that Jesus is alive. Such nonsense. Nobody writes a book to prove that Bonke is alive. Why not? Because I'm here. Living people show up. And Jesus shows up. Jesus is here. He, Jesus is here. Hallelujah. He's here as Savior. He's here as Deliverer. He's here as the Baptizer into the Holy Ghost and fire. It is all real. Absolutely real. You know what struck me also? We read in 1 Corinthians 15. Is it verse 6? It says there that 500 brethren saw Jesus at the same time before he ascended to heaven. 500. There's a lot of people. A few days later, only 120 were found on the upper room. And I asked myself, where were the 380? Why were they missing? Some may say, well, they were not in Jerusalem. Yes, they were in Jerusalem. It was the Feast of Tabernacles, and every man was in that area was required to be in Jerusalem at that time. They were there, but they were not on the upper room. So what happened? I think I know where they were. You know, they preferred to be in the temple where they had a more predictable, predictable order of service. Far more gentle and nice and kind and soft and sweet. You are a good fellow. Not everybody likes to be accused to be drunk in the ninth hour. 
not everybody likes to be found speaking in new tongues as the Holy Spirit gives utterance but I tell you one thing your opinion in all honor but the fire didn't fall in the temple the fire fell on the upper room hallelujah hallelujah I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ and I'm neither ashamed of the blessed Holy Spirit may God have his way because when he has his way it's always the best way amen oh glory to God glory to God glory to God are you ready to be dipped into that river of fire Well, Jesus is ready to do it. He says, ask and you shall receive. There is no complicated procedure. You know, some people make everything complicated, but it isn't. Some have the gift of complicatedness <laughs> they say if you you want to misunderstand the Bible you've got to get a theologian to help you <laughs> the Bible is pretty plain it's pretty plain it says there that they were of one accord one accord I used to hear it from my spiritual fathers what that meant and they said if we all become one if we all become one then the holy spirit will fall it's perfect unity he requires because the holy spirit fell on the day of pentecost because of their perfect unity i believe that until i read john 14 verse 16 listen what jesus said speaking about the holy spirit he said, I will pray the Father and He will give you another helper, the Holy Spirit, that He, the Holy Spirit, may abide with you forever. Jesus didn't say, you will pray. He said, I will pray. What you know why Jesus is giving you that fire today? Not because you have learned to pray so perfectly, we have got one less feather for our own hat. You won't get that endowment because of anything you do, but because Jesus has prayed for you by name and the Father answers the prayer of Jesus, especially when it comes to the promise of the Father. Say Amen. amen. Oh, hallelujah. In Jesus name it shall be so it shall be so somebody came to me and said to me Reinhardt why is God using you and why is God not using me no that's a dangerous question but my mind works in pictures I said, oh, that's quite simple. I say, imagine you've got two stoves in your house. One is cold and one is hot. And you want to make yourself a cup of coffee. Which one of the two would you use? The hot one. And now you know why God can use some and not others. Listen, I say to you in the name of Jesus, get the fire of the Holy Spirit inside of you. You never will need to ask God to use you. He will use you automatically. The prayer should not be, Lord, use me. The prayer should be, Lord, make me usable. And he is here to put his arm around you and dip you into that river of liquid fire. And I bet it will change you. 
it will change you that will release you into dimensions you have never known say amen, amen. I'm going to pray for you in a moment allow me just to leave the 99 and turn to the one lost sheep When the prodigal son came home, it says the father saw him and ran towards him. It always touched me. He ran. He, he had a heart full of compassion. I don't like when people tell me I'm a passionate preacher. Passion can turn someone into f a fanatic. I love to think, yes, it's passion tempered by compassion. Because co that compassion can only come from Jesus. And when the father saw him, he had compassion with him and he ran. I don't have much time to expound on this, but I thought by myself, why did that old man run? Old men don't like to run. Just ask me. But he ran. Why did he run? I'll tell you what came to me. When the father, when the father saw that silhouette far off, and he recognized his son, he watched him. The son took two steps and lingered. He took another step and lingered. He took another three steps and paused. And then the father suddenly thought, Oh, why is he stopping so often? Maybe he still wants to change his mind and turn around and go back to the pigsty and die. That put strength into that old man. And the father ran. He intercepted his son. And I say to every prodigal son and daughter here this moment, if you take one step to Jesus. Jesus takes 100 steps towards you. He loves you and he calls you. This moment is your moment of salvation. And Jesus is here to break every chain. To set you free from secret shame and sin. Nothing is worse than hypocrisy. May God help us all. If you are bound, Jesus is here to set you free. He said, he who comes to me, I will under no circumstances refuse what an offer. And my part in it is only one. If I could, I would come and put my arm around your shoulder and say, let me assist you to come to the Father. Jesus he's waiting for you and he says the father kissed him and the Greek word there says kept kissing him we read nowhere that he stopped kissing him what a wonderful love the love of God let's close our eyes in the presence of Jesus Lord I thank you from the bottom of my heart that you are here to receive that prodigal son and that prodigal daughter in Jesus name who is here this evening who says Lord I'm bound by sin I'm bound by Satan I'm staggering to you but you run towards me Jesus I come to you and receive you for my salvation or restoration then just lift your hand that I can see it 
and I will pray for you. Just wave your hand that I can acknowledge it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless. Wave your hand wherever you are. Wave your hand wherever you are that I can see it. I can see it. I see hands. I see hands. I see hands. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I see hands everywhere. Glory to God. Glory to God. Wave your hand. Let Jesus see your hand. Let Jesus see your hand. He's coming to you wherever you sit. Even if I can't come, He comes to you now. I want everyone to stand, please. And I want everyone to repeat this prayer after me. Please repeat this prayer after me we pray it all in support of those who are coming home right now say dear Lord Jesus I am coming home I repent of my sins I turn away from evil come into my heart wash me with your precious blood Break every chain. I put my trust alone in you. I believe with my heart. What I speak with my mouth. Jesus is now my Savior. Amen. And amen. Amen. Listen, listen, listen. Let me come back to the 99. Are you still there? I still have got two minutes. I tell you, God can do in a minute what we can't do in a million years. Say amen. amen. If you want the arm of Jesus to come around your shoulder, to dip you into that river of fire, and that you become a flame of fire as his word has promised lift your hand and we are going to worship him in unison open your mouth let jesus hear your voice but do it in faith and with praise and adoration praise the name of jesus the fire is falling Lord, I thank you that your fire is falling. Thank you that your fire is falling. Thank you for young men who shall see visions. Thank you for sons and daughters who prophesy. Lord, I pray, let this become the birthplace of evangelists that will cross the seven seas to declare your word that you will confirm with signs and wonders. I pray for the sick to be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing now in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, that you hear and answer prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen. Listen. When the Holy Spirit falls, people don't just talk in new tongues. Any, any miracle is possible. Because the Holy Spirit is a healing spirit. Amen. It's a river of life. It's a river of health. It's a river of peace. It's a river of fire. So I know the many were not just filled with the Holy Spirit, but were also healed physically in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! I've got another chance tomorrow night without a time limit. My, my heart amen amen i apologize a little bit you know because i'm an old-fashioned preacher who needs just one hour for an introduction no no i don't want to scare you either but i tell you sometimes we have got to take time to be holy amen and i believe tomorrow night god will move here in a mighty 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 way hallelujah before i hand the microphone back to pastor brian let me say one thing allow me to say this i i take the liberty to say it 
I've got an online school of fire. Reinhard Bonke school of fire. I tell you, I really share from the word of God the principles I have learned. It's, it's a diploma course and it's also a credit course. It's both. Just in the search engine, type in Reinhard Bonke and all the goodies are popping up. Okay? And you will be blessed. My heart's desire is one thing. As I said to you this morning, hell empty and heaven full. In Jesus' name. Beautiful.